and we're back. All right, so um, let's draw a door. So um, often you guys are going to get the temptation of, oh, we need a door. Let's go to the warehouse and let's build, find a door. And then you spend six hours trying to find a door um, that's perfect for your model. And I think it's more important for you to realize or recognize what it is that you want the style of your design to be and be capable of actually accomplishing that by building custom fixtures, doors, windows, and um, like, you know, like faucets and handles even. Um, and when you get to a certain point, like it can be super helpful for you to quickly model a light rather than, you know, in 30 seconds, then spend 30 minutes trying to find the right light you're looking for. Um, so we're going to do a door first and a door is very similar to a window. Um, so just kind of follow along with this process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle across this door right here. And I'm going to triple click on it and I'm just going to move this away because I don't actually need to work in that space. I just need that. I'm sort of tracing this surface, right? Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the bottom here. So I now just have these lines and these lines are the exact same lines that would make up that outer rim of the door. And next I'm going to create a profile here. And I'm going to do that by starting right here. I'm going to go um, back that way six inches because that's the thickness of my wall. And if I if this was an interior door, then I would go back and I would do four inches or four and a quarter or four and a half, whichever I chose. Um, so I'm going to do six inches this way. And then I have to think about how thick do I kind of want the, um, the molding for this door. So this will do, well, let's do two inches. This is a nice door. Um, and then I'm going to bring it out, let's say 0.5, and then we did 2 there, so we'll do 2.5. And then this is going to be uh, 7 because of math. And then I'm going to lock that in, go there, lock that in, and close that off. And so now I have basically kind of this shape right here. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use it to basically trace out a door. Um, and you'll kind of see what I'm going to do here in a second. Um, but before I do that, I'm just also going to come in and just kind of do this right there. Okay. Um, and that would be kind of like just part of the door molding. Um, if I was feeling super, super, super fancy, I could even come in here and just kind of do one of these. Um, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like in the end, too. Um, and we can erase that. But for now, we're just kind of worried about... Well, ooh, actually, let's go super fancy. And do. Nope, nope. I'll stop screwing around. All right. So we could do that as well. We'll show you what that looks like. Um, okay, so first, though, we've got this little tool, or this little shape, and we're going to use it to trace out the door pattern. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Follow Me tool, and this is one of those ones that um, doesn't have a key bind. I might be able to bind it. I'm not going to try right now, though. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm, you can see it kind of gets dimply when I hover over it. I'm going to come out here and make sure I can see the entire shape. Um, the follow me tool gets a little weird sometimes, and if you can't see the whole shape, it just kind of freaks out and goes blah. So um, I'm going to click on this, and you can see that it's following along this line, and it's going to complete right there. Okay? That's our door frame. That's it. Problem solved. Um, nothing else we need to do here except just triple click on it. And we're going to make this a group for now. Okay. So next we need to make a door. And so for that, I'm going to kind of come in here. And I want to get this corner right here. I'm going to zoom out, middle mouse, double click right there so I can kind of jump down to this spot quicker. And I'm going to go to right there. And this is going to be sort of the maximum area our door can occupy, right? Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this in just a tiny bit. I only need like a tiny space, and if I hide myself here, um, we can see that down here in the distance, if I go kind of right about there, it's about a quarter inch, which is about right, because um, your door isn't going to fit 100% snug. So I'm going to do uh, 0.25, and that's going to give us that little gap right there. Um, now, this is where it's going to get confusing. Follow along, this makes sense. I'm going to select that. I'm going to copy it just with control C or edit copy, but I'm not going to cut it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to undo a couple steps to before I drew that shape. And that's just two steps back. Now I'm going to do edit paste in place. And now I've got that same rectangle, 
but it's already offset, so I don't have to do any weird cleanup with it, um, which saves you a little bit of time right there. And then I'm going to do the push-pull tool, and I'm going to refer to the surface that's right here, and that was, that's a thick door, it's fine though. Um, and so that gives us that door right there, all right? Triple click on this, make it a group. Now, um, again, it's a it's a group. We have this, this right here. We have the we have the sorry we have the door frame. Um, we have our door itself, and then I can even go in um, and kind of place. Oh, why do I never remember door handle heights? Um, let me Google that. Real quick. Okay, so we're gonna do 36 inches for this door handle height. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Um, Oh, I put the door in the right That's, um, Actually, let me spin around here. Here's that here's that weird beveled edge that I created earlier, too. So you can get kind of interesting faces um, going on, depending on how you place it. Um, I put this on the wrong side of that little stripping. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over this way, and I'm going to show you one of the coolest keys you can press. If you hit K on the keyboard, see how like I got all these kind of invisible lines right here? So if I hit K on the keyboard and then snap this so that it's on that green axis, um, and because I have the face selected here, I can actually find this line right here and just, where is it, right there. Sneak that just into the right position. Um, and then this is me being a pet hand because in exterior doors should always open inwards. Um, <laughs> it was set up on the wrong side. So, all right, we've got that door right there and right so we need to go from here and i'm going to go up 36 inches and i could probably go another two it's a range i googled it and it says 34 to 48 48 seems absurdly high though um, so let's go another two and we'll erase that one and then we will bring this in let's say four inches because um, that's kind of wanna, where we want to center this. And we'll do kind of like a modern look on this because that's easier to draw, honestly. Um, so I'm going to start drawing this. Um, and I'll do a rectangle that's just kind of... We'll do uh, what kind of looks right. Let's do a 2 inch by 4 inch. Oops, 2 inch comma 4 inch. And we'll just draw that. And then... Um, again, because I've already made this a group, I can actually work on top of this surface, which is another one of those kind of fringe benefits where I can move this and get it off of this surface and it doesn't explode on me. So um, I can go to midpoint here, move it over and get it to snap. Midpoint here, move it up. And so now we've, oh yeah, that should actually probably be there. No. I'll stop worrying about it. Okay, so we've got that little surface right there, and then we'll just pull this out. This will be kind of like our modern door handle here. Um, and then I can draw another rectangle, and this one I'm not even really going to measure. I'm just going to kind of make sure it's square, holding down shift. Um, and then um, you can just kind of get wild with this as you go. Actually, let's do circle. Uh, reference? No? All right. So we'll do a circle right here, and we'll do another one here, and this will kind of be like the keyhole or something. Pull this out just a tiny bit, we'll pull this out to right there, and then we'll draw a rectangle here, we'll pull that out, and then we'll do another one right here, except we'll take this surface. And we'll pull this out right here. Actually, let's just even this up. And then we'll just clean up these extra lines here. Um, oh, that's way too close. Um, so we'll just move this out. 
That looks more writer. Uh, we'll go with that. Um, okay, so. Oops, deleted my four. Okay. Um, so we've got that right there. Triple click on it, and we'll make it a group. And then because this is part of the door itself, what I'm going to do is I'm um, I'm actually going to cut it. Actually, no, we'll leave it where it is right now. Um, and we'll actually select the handle and the door. So you can see right here, I've got the door selected. Um, and I'm going to make these their own group because they should actually swing together. Um, that's if you want to get real fancy later and actually set up like a way to rotate the door like that, if you fancy. Um, okay, and then, like I said, we're going to do modern, so maybe we'll throw in some uh, windows here. Again, I'll come over here, reference that center point right there, and then maybe we'll do... Uh, we'll start one foot six up, and we'll go eight inches. Oh, let's be fancy and actually do eight, enter, x, five. Oh. Eight inches, x, five. No, oh, I guess that, yeah, that will only work with the other thing. So let's bring this over 10 inches, 10 inches, and then we'll draw a rectangle across there. And then we'll go, let's see, 10 foot, was it, what's that, 8, we'll do 16 inches, enter x3, no, oh, I moved, um, oops, there we go. Let's do that again. Got that selected. Move it up. 18, sorry, 16 inches. Enter X3. Okay. And then we'll move this up again. Actually, let's move it out to right. Do one inch. Okay. So now I've got these little, I've got these three surfaces right here. They look kind of like they're spaced where I want them to be so now I can double click into this door surface and I'll just I'm out here and I'll just double click until I get to a raw surface right here um, and then I'll just click once on it just to place it or to make sure that's selected um, we'll do paste in place and then we'll cut our fancy little holes in here here those are probably like too wide um, and there and then um, we'll do escape once, and I think I got some cleanup right there, and some cleanup right there. Okay. And then um, last part for this door is, again, I'm going to repeat that same process that I did for the frame, um, but I'm going to be doing it kind of how I, I'll, I'll do that window in a second, but this will be just a solid frame. So again, I'll come back over to here. Um, actually, we'll stay outside of there for now. Um, and this will actually be one that's just going to fit on the inside here. So I'm going to draw a little tiny line right there. Um, and this is, oh, right, because I did that weird distance. Um, you know how I told you guys never draw, um, or never use scale tool? We're going to use the scale tool. So I'm just going to notch this in, and I'm going to hold down, um, Catch up. Oh no, don't knock up. Oh, I hit all. My bad. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, all right, so I'm going to scale this in, and you can see down here it's a, it's a decimal fraction. So I'm just going to hold down control so that it does it equally on both sides, and we're just going to notch this in. I don't particularly care how much it's in. And then I'm going to rotate this. So I'm going to lock the I'm going to move the mouse over here with the rotate tool, it's this one right here. Um, I'm going to move it so it's on that green face, and then I'm going to hold down shift on this, and then I'm going to reference that point right there. I'm going to use that as an axis to rotate this up 90 degrees, and I'll just let that snap. 
Um, and then we'll see if we can get lucky and get this to actually reference off this neighboring line here. So, um, so we'll do another uh, tools, follow me. And if we're lucky, it'll work out. If not, we'll just have to, yeah, it's not playing nice. Okay, so we'll move it back over here just temporarily. Tools, follow me. Oh, you know what it needs? It needs a rectangle. It needs that. Um, it has to actually be sitting on the line it's being used on. So, and then this actually, I moved too far. So let's just nudge this. Oh no. Okay, let's try this again. Move it to there. Rectangle. And then we'll come over here and we'll do the See, ah, I don't like doing this. Uh, let me... Okay. Uh, actually, okay. Yeah. It's going to be hard to do just because of the angle that we're going to be looking at it at. We'll work with it. Alright, so rectangle. Leave that face right there. And we'll do camera, or sorry, tools. Follow me. And then, um, and sometimes it does that where it just kind of goes, I'm going to shoot straight to the edge. Um, don't worry about that. Just hit control Z and then it usually works fine the next time. And I'm just going to kind of have it follow that space right there. Oop, there we go. And sometimes this last angle can be kind of weird and we'll just close it off right there. Um, and we got a weird extra line for some reason. I'll hit K to kind of see what's going on here. Um, but it looks fine, so I'll delete those extra bits. Oh, I see it. Okay. Turn that off. Delete that face. And then should be able to redraw this. And then redraw this. If I delete that, we should be in business. So we've got this little tiny lip right here. Um, and again, because we, of the way we placed it, it's not associated to anything. Um, we'll hit K, and I'm going to just kind of, should be able to find the midpoint of the thing I have selected here, and then move off in this direction, we'll lock it, and then we'll find right there the midpoint of that, so we can get that centered. And then we'll make that a group, and then we'll put a window in here. Um, so we're just layering. We're just layering weird little shapes on top of each other. Um, but the computers just kind of kind of go with it. And anything you, as creative as you, you can get with this is going to open up a lot of possibilities here. But it's little details like this little gap right here that are actually going to make your model pop in the end. Um, all right, so anytime you put in glass, um, for the sake of rendering programs and for your own sanity, um, make that glass the thickness of the actual panel that it would be. So we're actually going to only do this right here. I'm only going to do a quarter of an inch. All right. Um, triple click on that. And I did make that a group. Yeah. Okay. And then I don't particularly care that it's not exactly center. I'm just going to take this to the midpoint and then I'm going to group it. And then I'm going to select that little frame I made, group those two together. And then I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. And, ooh, too much. And then we'll go from this corner to this corner with the move tool. And again, we'll do X3. And so now I've got that same little window copied there three times. Now, if I was smart, what I would have done is I would have come in here first and actually gone through and assigned. Um, where is it? Glass and mirrors. And um, I'm I'm a really big fan of either these these two. Um, I like kind of having that bluish tint to the glass. Um, but once I place it, I'm always going to take this back way, way, way from there. I just like that slight blue tint. Um, and we'll call this glass one. Yeah, it's on there. OK, so that's glass one. And, oops, triple click. There we go. So now you've got that translucency. 
Um, you can kind of see it's glass, but it's not like going to kind of stand like, like, I think the, the normal one is too blue is where I'm going with that. Uh, we'll go in here, select, we will get another color. And again, doesn't matter, but I'm going to be super picky about it. No, I'm not. See how I avoided that? All right. Um, and this, we're just going to call this uh, trim one dark gray. And then we'll just kind of same process. We'll just kind of go with the dark gray color right there. Oops. Trim one dark gray. Okay. So we've got that trim color. Um, and now we can actually copy, move copy this little assembly. X3. Okay. Um, this will make. Is there a good. Uh, we'll do aluminum for this. Um, I'm not going to be picky about that. Um, you can resize the area. So see how this is kind of like weirdly blurry and stretched out. You could come in here and change this to like one foot instead of five foot. Um, and it's going to kind of change how that texture gets applied. And then. Um, it might look a little bit better. And then for the door itself, um, we'll do this surface. We'll do wood on this. So we'll do wood. <sighs> Let's see here. No. Um, and nope. Yeah, we'll take this down to one foot as well. Um, and then I want to lighten this up. Oh, no, that's just kind of getting weird. Let's go dark. Desaturate, go dark, but leave a little bit of wood texture in there. There we go. All right, and then let's go back to this trim right here. And I can just go into my model options, find that dark gray trim, and set it. So, um, it full well we're 22 minutes into this but i think at full speed this is probably something i could have knocked out in about five minutes um, which is probably less time than it would have taken most people to find um, a door that looked like this that probably wouldn't have had oh, except for this weird uh, trim on the interior probably wouldn't have had the same quality and then i would have still had to go in and kind of apply um, whatever specifics i had for my model into this all right so we have a door we have all these panels so let's um, again, get super OCD with it. Um, so I'm actually gonna, we'll explode this door first. Just keep it as few nested groups as possible. So we've got our windows and we've got our door. So we got all that right there. So if I make that a group, now we've got, no, thank you. Um, okay, so we've got that and we've got this door. And then this will make a group. I could make that a component and call this, um, I could actually component this and call this um, two foot, wait, no, I did 26 inch, two foot four. Um, your boy knows math. That's why it seems so narrow. Okay. Um, two foot two modern exterior door create that and so now I've got that as a component um, that I can reuse in different spots so how do we get this back in super simple trick too um, K key again I showed you guys that earlier I'm gonna select on this weird like at this corner right here I want to select on that one right there and then you can see inside of the model here there's that corner right there that I want to line it up at and it should just snap right to that and my door fits right in there perfectly okay um, so I'm going to go full speed on this window right here, and we'll see how I do. We're at 24 minutes. Let's see if I can do it by 28. So I'll pull this out. Um, windows are similar to doors in that you kind of do the exact same process, except that you don't delete this line on the bottom. Um, so I'm going to do this here. Um, we'll do six inches in, and then uh, and then we're going to bring this in. Let's say. Um, quarter inch um, and then this will come out 
we'll go down. We did two, I think, on the other one. So 2.25, and then we'll snap it going in and close that off. So we've got that right there. We'll do our tools, follow me, wrap this around. Oh, I didn't do, didn't do one of these. Do I wanna do one of those? No, I don't. We'll do that with the rest of it. Tools, follow me. Um, and try not to reference anything else while I'm doing this. So there's our frame, make group. And then for the window, I'm actually gonna, gonna do half. So we got that right there. And then um, we'll, this is gonna be a slider. So I'm just gonna move this over an inch, um, which will make sense more in a minute. Um, and then this we're actually going to bring in, um, we did one inch, so we're going to do 1.25, and then I'm also going to bring this in another 0.5. These are just kind of arbitrary numbers. These are not <laughs> me going, oh yes, math. Um, so we'll do that. I'm going to bring this in one inch, and this will be the window frame for one side. And we're just going to kind of... Take this part, find the center right there, and then um, I'm going to move copy it over here. I'm going to flip along with green direction, um, and then we'll rotate around here, find that. I'm just going to, normally I wouldn't build this like this, but hey, today's the day. Oh, actually, um, let me first just for the sake of being complete here, let's make that a group. Let's make that a group. We'll draw a window. So again, quarter inch glass. Um, and you can see, I, I know that I'm doing that, um, but I'm shooting that super far out so that I don't have to measure it. Um, we'll make that a group. And then come over here again, just kind of finding that center. And then we will move copy this to right there. So now we've got two, two windows, two sliding units. Um, I'm going to group that. No, we'll leave that actually. Oops. Um, yeah, we're going to group this. So we've got a group. We'll group this. This one I'm going to select right here on that corner. We'll snap it to that one. We did the back side with the other one, so now they should line up properly. Um, and then one last little tricky trick. Um, I'm going to double click on this line right here, and then I'm going to do another one that's, let's go a half inch on a 28. See, I was getting fancy. Um, okay, so we'll just do this, delete that, and we'll pull this out to like, yeah, 1.5 um, OCD things. Um, and um, at this point now, it's all just throwing in materials. So we'll triple click on that. Let's throw the glass in. Uh, double click on that. Trim color. Uh, and I'll just switch over with B. Oops, get out of there. And B. Okay, so that took me five minutes. You boys are rusty. All right, so group the whole thing, make group, and now you can slide it into position. Um, and then we'll do K and snap it right there. So that took, yeah, that took five minutes. Um, to build that window, it's it's nice, it's okay. Um, it is fancy in that you can double click on it, and now because of the way I organize these layers, you've got a sliding door or a sliding window. Um, so if you, and then if this instead was a component, um, we grouped, yeah. So if we were a component, um, a component, we do four foot by four foot modern exterior, called simple, I don't know if it's modern, simple exterior window slider. Okay. Um, so let's say I had a house with like 
whole bunch of these windows. Now because this is a component, I can go in and I can open all the windows in the house all at once. Um, so that's one of those handy tricks where it's like if you want to kind of like customize the model and make it look super trick like that, you can do things like that. Um, I'm not going to go in and add like a, I'm not that OCD where I'm going to go and add like a screen to the window um, because that's crazy. So um, yeah, we'll just delete the ooh, not those. Um, well, I guess I said I was going to do a table, didn't I? Um, I don't know. That's all for this lecture, but I'm going to... I'll draw a table, and if you want to watch, you can watch. Um, but that's all I was going to cover for this. So, um, yeah. So there's our simple little um, thing. Not happy with some of those colors, but they are what they are. All right. Um, let's build a table real quick. So I'm just going to draw... Um, Let's give it some thick legs. So we'll do 1.5, comma 1.5 to get a leg right there. We'll come up 40 inches. Um, triple click on that. And we'll move this over four feet. Move these over three feet. And then I'm gonna, just gonna reference the tops of these and we'll lock it in the red axis and we'll just do a um, I guess a six inch kind of border going on here so we'll just lock that in um, six inches and six enter and my head blocks the light okay so we'll do that as a tabletop um, and then we'll just pull this up oh uh, and we'll fix that in a second. We'll give this a one inch thick tabletop and then um, I'm going to hit K again and I'm going to zoom in here and I want to just erase all these extra lines right here um, just to kind of clean this up so I don't have extra weird things going on. There we go. And there we go. Um, and then you want to get fancy you can add like little cross members here so um, kind of how I did with the other stuff uh, we'll just take this in like a quarter of an inch and then I'm not even going to measure it out I'll just scale this down from the top and I'll scale this back up well, that's kind of low um, hit your legs on that table knee bruisers what this one is all right and we'll reference that and then we can actually take this and copy this over to here and then if you're feeling really tricky what you can do is you can reference that point right there with the move copy rotate yeah and then um, we'll reference the center of this right here to there and then we'll just select the endpoint here and bring that to there now, I don't want them all at the same height because that would be crazy uh, so we'll move that up to say four inches and then we'll copy this over to the other side and there we go that's a simple table in probably like two minutes or something um, so yeah, um, that's SketchUp. Um, try and follow along with building the house. Don't worry about my weird ass or my weird table. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the first one this semester. Um, yeah, and so just kind of walking through the process of doing coloring and filling in colors, modeling um, simple shapes and things that you might need for your project. So um, see you guys in class.